African team resisting the temptation to play a spinner with Eric Simons again the 12th man. One change in the Australian lineup, Merv Hughes has not fulfilled their hopes on this tour and he makes way for Paul Rifle. Donald to Mark Taylor. Peel for LBW and up goes the finger of umpire Cyril Mitchley and an early breakthrough for South Africa and Alan Donald. The only question, did it pitch outside the leg stump? I don't think so. He's up on his toes, but it hit him just on the roll. Good delivery and the end of Mark Taylor. Australia seven for one. Arnie de Villiers. And Slater, as we've come to know him, has a go at it. He really slashed at that one and it hastened away to the fence. And McMillan and Boone just getting underneath that and he seemed to have so much time in which to do it in the end. Pulling it for four. Craig Matthews, face of great determination and he's caught! How many times have we seen Michael Slater perish like that? He does not get over that shot. He slashes at it with his bat in an angle, a bit like Eddie Barlow used to do. And a nice, comfortable catch for a leaping Jaunty Rhodes. And Slater, once again disappointing, making 20. elegance he just uh, stroked that one away for four again all timing Donald back into the attack again and he's caught He's caught by Gary Kirsten, low down. And a deliberate sort of trap set there by the South African skipper Kepler Vessels. They love to play on the onside, but you've got to keep it down. And uh, this is what Boone does not do on that occasion. And so Donald has got his second wicket. And the big one, Boone, is gone. And Australia, 81 for three. Oh, what a way to get off the mark. Alan Border in what might be his last test match. The most capped test player in history. This is 156th. Short, and he did awfully well there, did Mark War. That lifted a little more than I think he thought it would do, and he somehow was able to roll his wrists and keep it down. Too short. Up in the air. Oh, and a nice comfortable catch. And Alan Border, not for the first time on this tour, falling for the trap. And very surprising to see him do so. Macmillan, a big strong fellow, drops it short. And he tried to scoop that up. Instead of hitting it flatter, it didn't really get up. And an easy catch for Jonty Rhodes and a very valuable wicket for South Africa. So Alan Border will be disappointed. Getting out for 17, desperately like 100 in what might be his last test. Beautiful delivery from Alan Donald and an edge and Alan Donald has got the dangerous Mark War who was looking so good. This is how it happened. Just watch this delivery. It just did enough I think off the track. It had plenty of pace in it and a big thick edge for Richardson to do the rest. And Mark War gone for 43. And suddenly South Africa have uh, Got on top, 
at 123 for five. Too short that time from Alan Donald. He hit it hard into the ground and it eluded the leaping fielder. Fanny de Villiers held that one back a little bit, but it was too wide and too full. And umpire Mahbub Shah of Pakistan, the neutral umpire, having taken over from David Shepard, signalling the runs. That's well played by Ian Healy. That was up on a Yorker length and he turned square and just seemed to shovel it away with lots of timing though for four. And that will be his 50. And what a tremendous partnership this is turning out between Healy and Steve Waugh. And Healy has made most of the play. His 50 coming from just 94 balls with seven boundaries. Off the inside edge, into the stumps, and at last the partnership has been broken. And Healy has gone. Matthews getting that one to nip back quite sharply and lift a bit. A very good delivery and uh, Healy gone after putting on 92 in just over two hours with Steve Waugh. A tremendous partnership to rescue this Australian first innings and Healy's 55 a very valuable contribution. Steve Waugh continues Finding the gap in the covers. Empire Mitchley signaling the boundary. And the diving Alan Donald, has he done himself an injury? Don't bowl there to any Australian batsman, particularly to Steve Waugh. On the onside, he'll get you away, and those two runs bring up his 50. What a cricketer this man is. Man of the match, remember, at Newlands. And now 50 in just over three hours. Up they go. That was a full delivery. And umpire Shah lifts his finger. And De Villiers has got another one. Move right across in front of his stumps. Even though De Villiers goes pretty wide of the crease, I don't think there was much doubt about that. And rifle out for 13. Well, I think he was going to let that one go. He tried to take his bat away, and it went off the face of the bat, and a nice comfortable catch for Kepler Vessels, the skipper at first slip. He could have left it, it was wide enough, and you see where his bat ended up, I think that was his intention. Too late though, he thought about it, off the face of the bat. Comfortable catch for Vessels, Warren gone for two, and suddenly Australia, a little collapse. I need Steve Waugh though. And he's going to get four more there. Matthews. Oh, and Kepler Vessels has got another. Steve Waugh having a slash at that, and that's the one the South Africans wanted. This is not a good shot at all. I think it was too full to play that sort of shot, and it came back at him, so it cramped him for space, and uh, it flew off the bat to the safe hands of Vessels. But a fine 64 from Waugh. McDermott has a go, it's up in the air, it's hanging there, and Donald gets the catch, toppling over as he took it. So a well-judged catch, they're never easy when they go that high. And McDermott, in typical fashion, striking out at the Australian innings ending. And this is how it happened, giving himself room to play the shot, but he didn't get it in the meat of the bat, up and up it went. Donald, dark glasses and all, good catch. So McDermott, last man out for six, and Australia 
all out for 269. They were in trouble at 123 for five, but then that fine partnership of 92 between Steve Waugh and Ian Healy rescued the innings. And in the end, Australia will be disappointed to be bowled out for 269. Again, the Waugh brothers contributing well, and that fine 55 from Ian Healy. Much better bowling performance from the South Africans, in particular Alan Donald, although a little expensive, he bowled with pace and fire, 3 for 71. Another splendid performance from De Villiers, 2 for 55. And Craig Matthews, growing in stature, 4 for 65. McDermott to Hudson. And that's going to go for four. Again, the full face of the bat from Andrew Hudson. And this will bring up his thousand runs in test cricket. The first South African to do that since South Africa's readmission. Nice crowd to see it. McGrath to Kirsten Short, and Kirsten takes him on. Should have the beating of the fielder, just. McGrath again to Hudson. When he nearly got a finger onto that, it didn't break. There might be a run out anyway. Healy takes the bails off. Is Andrew Hudson stranded? They're going to have to call for the third umpire, Carl Liebenberg, to make a decision. But Hudson went almost all the way down to the other end. Rifle gets the throw in to Healy, but it's a bit wide, and Healy had a long way to go. And now obscures the wicket as he breaks it. And. Andrew Hudson, who thought he was out and was on his way, gets a reprieve. Alan Border after it. And he doesn't make it. And that brings up the 50 partnership and a very good start by South Africa. Shane Warne. Overpitched and wide. Good shot, though, by Gary Kirsten. Andrew Hudson, one away from yet another 50. And this will be it. What a class batsman he's turning out to be. Remember that century on debut in Barbados against the West Indies? Paul Rifle, too short. And that is manna from heaven for Andrew Hudson. He's got all the shots, but he loves to pull and cut. Appeal for LBW, and umpire Shaw gives him out. That came back quite sharply to Andrew Hudson. A good delivery from Paul Rifle. You see, he's fairly wide of the crease as he lets it go. It comes back sharply, hits him above the roll, but it was on the back leg, and Hudson given out LBW for 65. South Africa 100 for one. Short, and Hansi Kronia onto it. Pulls it through mid-wicket for four. An appeal for a catch down the leg side, and Gary Kirsten has been given out. Now, that was a bad delivery there from Paul Rifle. Down the leg side, he just tried to flick it away down to fine leg. Must have got a faintest of brushes, and he's given out. Or did it come off the pad? Whatever, Gary Kirsten has been given out for 41. McDermott. And that must be out, surely. Yes, it is. Kepler Vessels getting that front foot of his right across in front of the stumps. And there could have been little doubt about that. He tried desperately to get it out of the way to fool the umpire. And not to be. Watch there. He gets that uh, right leg right across. Or did it pitch outside leg stump? That's what Kepler Vessels might be thinking. 
one. And he gets this one away down to fine leg. It might even go for four, it does. It was a bad ball from Shane Warne and quite well played in the end by Kirsten. Oh, another one short from McDermott. And Hansi Cronier has got all the shots in the book and he pulls very strongly. It's up in the air, and he's caught. Well, it had to happen. Hansi Cronier on this tour has decided to take on Shane Warne. He's hit him for some very big ones, but it was a matter of time before he sliced one up into the air like he did there. And I think Shane Warne knew it was coming at some stage. He wasn't quite to the pitch there, and with a turn, slicing up off the bat and a running catch for War. And a little chuckle, no doubt, from Shane Warne to get his man like that. And Cronier gone for 26. Warne to Rhodes this time. And he's caught, I think, by David Boone. No, Boone doesn't go up with the rest. So did it bounce just in front of Boone? This might tell us. Certainly Boone owns up to the fact that he didn't get it cleanly. He very nearly did get his fingers underneath it. Round the wicket now, worn short and packed away by Jonty Rhodes. Rifle. Well, a bit lucky. Despair for the bowler and four runs for the batsman. Yeah. Rifle wide and short, and Rhodes taking full advantage. Brings the 200 onto the board. Mark War, too short, and he's hooked it well. Oh, and a bit of a misfield there by Shane Warne and four runs, and it gives Jonty Rhodes his 50. And South Africa, 228 for four, well on the road now to build a big first innings lead. Nicely played. Or just strained down the leg side, helped on its way. McGrath. Up in the air. Oh, and he dropped it. Craig McDermott not having the best of days. And he's suffering from injury. And of course, McGrath annoyed. And Rhodes lucky. He dug it in, wasn't a good delivery, but Rhodes was not able to keep it down. So McDermott just couldn't get in quickly enough. Beautifully played. Again, it was uh, too wide and gave him the room. And he's back so quickly for the second. And a hundred partnership, and what a valuable one this is for South Africa between the old man of the side, Peter Kirsten and the effervescent Jonty Rhodes. Is he out? Yes, up goes the finger. And that was a bad shot by Peter Kirsten. He struggled a little bit and he was neither forward nor back here really. And it slipped through to hit him on the back pad in the end. Up goes the dreaded finger. 49, an innings a bit laboured, 228 minutes. That didn't really get up to Jonty Rhodes, but he got enough bat on it to hit it away through mid-wicket for four. Oh, 
Guy's got him. Must be. Jonty Rhodes reads him most of the time, but not all the time. And he's got him a few times. A bit of a smile there, even on Jonty Rhodes' face. They're great friends, these two. And uh, Jonty Rhodes knows that he was completely flummoxed here. That was the flipper. The famed flipper. But another very good contribution from Jonty Rhodes of 78. What a star this man is turning out to be. Not a pretty looking shot by Brian McMillan. He knew it was short enough to do something with. One would have thought though he might have tried to hit it away on the offside, but he's got four runs anyway. Alan Border, now the bowler, but he dropping that short and that's pulled away for four runs. And it brings up the 5,000 runs in first-class cricket for Dave Richardson to go with his 400 first-class dismissals behind the stumps. Oh, and that's an elegant shot. A glorious shot, in fact. Off the back foot, one of the most difficult shots to play as well as Macmillan played it there. And it brings his 50. Just under three hours, six boundaries. Rifle with the new ball. And again, Macmillan off the back foot. Magnificent shot. Straying and whipped away by Dave Richardson, just back with a square. And another 100 partnership in the South African innings in just over three hours. And Richardson again playing his role. Slower ball, but full toss. And driven down the ground by Dave Richardson. Just one short of the 400 now, South Africa. And there it is. And so a very handy lead indeed of 131 with four wickets still in hand. That'll bring him his 50. Well played, Dave Richardson. The unsung hero of South African Test cricket. Never flashy behind the stumps, but immensely competent and very useful with a bat. Now he's out, Richardson. An easy catch for Rifle. Trying to come down the wicket to attack Shane Warne wasn't quite to the pitch and that's the danger you see because it turns and it turns quickly and the bat slicing across it and there can only be one result and that's up in the air and a tremendous 59 from Dave Richardson boosting South Africa to 417 An easy catch and a soft, tame ending to Macmillan's fine innings. Slater the catcher. And what deceived Macmillan there was the fact that uh, War, as he so often does, held it back. He's got several slower balls. And this one was looked like almost the leg spin or the googly. And uh, he was way too early with the shot. But an 84 that this crowd will remember from Brian McMillan. Up goes the finger. It was very full and Matthews made the mistake of playing down the line with a pad rather than with the bat. And you can't see the stumps for the pad and the umpire happy enough as a result. Just one for Craig Matthews.
They appeal for LBW. War in particular, and umpire Mitchley puts up the finger. And I wonder if de Villiers will be happy about that because he seemed to be well forward. Let's see if it comes back at de Villiers. It certainly does, and with him fairly well forward, that might have just strayed down the leg side. Umpire Mitchley doesn't think so. See a big stride there from de Villiers. So South Africa all out for a sizable 422 thanks to three century partnerships. Exactly 100 for the first wicket between Hudson and Gary Kirsten. 101 for the fifth wicket between Peter Kirsten and Jonty Rhodes. And then 143 for the seventh wicket between Brian McMillan and Dave Richardson. That did it. The Australian bowlers toiled hard, McDermott with injury. Shane Warne, an incredible 55 overs for just 92 runs and four wickets, and War, three for 40, another valuable performance. The lead, 153 for South Africa on the first innings, and that certainly is something to build on for victory. Macmillan, and Slater gets it past the diving mid-on, and that'll be four, just trickling into the boundary. Hit hard by Slater on the up, and that brings up the 50. Peel for LBW, and that's the one South Africa wanted to break this opening partnership with Australia still well in arrears. And Mark Taylor, the vice skipper, is gone LBW to De Villiers. Pitched certainly online. And maybe just came back enough to trim that off stump. And Taylor, a patient 12. Slater, the dominant partner in the 55. But lucky, top edge, four runs, just a bit late on the shot. And uh, Slater goes to 50. He's been promising this all series. Alan Donald. And Boone plays that well. It was up on Yorker length. Great timing. He's caught. Peter Kirsten has got him at backward point. He's there just for that shot. The slash to the short one outside the off stump. He's well away from the batsman. And he's pretty square. And it was straight into his hands. And what a valuable wicket this is. It went quickly. Well taken. And so two for 81 now, Australia. Still well behind South Africa, who enjoyed that 153 run lead on the first innings. And the dangerous boon gone for 12, like the vice captain Mark Taylor. Bad ball by de Villiers, straying onto the leg stump. And really packed away by Slater. Brings up the 100. He's caught this time. The big safe hands of Brian McMillan at second slip pouches that one. And the night watchman Shane Warne has gone. He played well last evening. And he's held up the South Africans again today. But this is how it eventually ended. Just guiding that in the direction of second slip. Enjoy for Alan Donald. A good effort from Shane Warne. Australia 109 for three. Brian McMillan going round the wicket now to Mark War. Oh, and it's such a good looking shot. Just eased into it. Oh. 
Back past the stumps at the bowler's end. Off the back foot too, well timed. And that will erase the deficit. Heel for LBW, and he's been given out. That's the one they wanted. Michael Slater falling just five short of his century, and what a good one it would have been. And how bitterly disappointed he is. Alan Donald gets it to come back a little, and it hits him just on the top of the roll. But he was well back. That front leg was on the crease. Border cracks it away for four. Off the mark with a boundary as he was in the first innings, looking for, of course, a hundred in his what could be his final test. It makes it look so easy, does Mark War. Just waited for that to come on to him and stroked it away with all the timing in the world. Another one elegantly played by Mark War. Brings up the 200. And when Donald gets it in, it'll also be War's 50. And what a stylish innings it has been. Just over two and a quarter hours. He's very savage on the hook. Former baseball player, or cricketer, stroke baseballer. And really cracked that one away. Again, he just angles it so well off the bat through mid wicket. Punching that one away. Too short from Hansi Kronier. And crashed away. Waited for that. Beautifully driven through the covers by Alan Border. Glorious shot. And it takes him to 35. Ryan McMillan. Short and wide. Just a little bend of the knees there. And away it goes. That'll bring up the 100 partnership, just nudging it down to fine leg where Andrew Hudson is stationed. And frustration growing for South Africa. Well up. Ideal delivery to drive through the covers for four. Where he's so strong through the onside, and the two runs will bring up a magnificent hundred from uh, Mark War. It's been overdue, but well worth waiting for, and it has certainly saved the match for Australia. 12 fours in four and a half hours. Bobby Simpson, the former great. Australian delighted. And this is another four runs to war. Poor light. And no hope of a result. So Jonty Rhodes gets a bowl. And a maiden over. So what will the umpires say now? They've conferred a couple of times before. They might as well call it off. The light is bad. There's no hope of a result. And umpire Mitchley asked Alan Border, and he says, thank you very much. 
I'll end with an asterisk in what might be my last test innings, and War will be happy to be undefeated with his magnificent century in a partnership of 140 in 226 minutes. But Slater earlier had done much to save the Australians and War and Border in that big partnership, making sure that South Africa would be denied victory. 297 for four. The South African bowlers try what they may. They could not uh, get all the wickets they needed. Three for 66 and a good performance again from Donald and uh, pretty useful bowling all the way down the line. So the series drawn one all. Man of the match in the final test, Mark War for his 43 and brilliant 113 not out. But the man of the series, Brother Steve. 195 runs at an average of 65 in the test series and 13 wickets for 188 runs. A tremendous all-round performance. And a final tribute to the great Alan Border playing arguably his last test series and delightful to have had him in South Africa. More tests, more runs, more tests as captain.